Mr. Vice President, thank you for joining us you on bet, this historic day in this place of ambition, achievement, and innovation. It's an honor to be here with you, sir. It's a nostalgic day, but I want to talk to you about the future of space and in your position as head of the Space Council. Yesterday, the President seemed uncertain about the <laughs> order of things. Can you clarify once and for all, for the people here and for the country at large, the moon is first and then Mars, correct? That's 100 percent correct, and that's the policy that the president's put into motion since uh, reestablishing the National Space Council. And Why the ambiguity the yesterday, space. then? Well, no, what the American people saw is the president and I serve with every day. He always wants to go farther, faster, sooner. And so asking the tough questions, uh, what the experts in the room, having Buzz Aldrin standing there, having Mike Collins standing there, getting their opinions, that's just how President Trump operates. But we understand when we go to Mars, and Americans are going to Mars, that we're going to have to have developed new technologies, new equipment, and gain new experience that we can only gain on the moon. And the president fully endorses that. It's one of the reasons why we set the goal that we're going to return American astronauts to the moon in the next five years and then go on to Mars. Does and that I process couldn't be more excited to be a part of it. That played out in the Oval Office yesterday, yeah. even though it is a sort of a Q&A and it's a tough question. Does it create uncertainty on Capitol Hill to, so members of Congress who have to give you the money to make this a reality don't know what the policy is? Oh, no. I, I think people are very, very clear that the only person that's more impatient about our space program than the vice president is the president. <laughs> president Trump wants to get back on the point of American leadership in human space exploration. And, and he wants to send send America on an unalterable trajectory to put astronauts on Mars. And we all understand that to do that. Uh, first, we've got to have American rockets going up from American soil. And literally within the next year, we'll have American astronauts going back into space from right here in the USA on American rockets. Then it's to the moon where we establish a presence. So this time, Major, when, when we go to the moon, we're not, we're not going to visit, we're going to stay. We're going to develop resources, we're going to develop new methods, new technology, and then it's on from the moon to Mars. That's principally on the moon about the South Pole and ice. Right. Yeah, enormously important discovery that, uh, that many Americans uh, uh, you know, have, have not yet come to fully appreciate that, that we discovered ice on the moon. Now, and that means not only can we harvest water for a sustained presence. We can also develop fuel. We can develop oxygen. This has really changed the dynamic of American presence on the moon and the value that the moon presents to the United States to continue to advance our leadership in human space exploration. So the question the president asked yesterday, why not Mars Direct, that's settled. We can't do that and we're not going to do that. It is settled, but I, I think the American people really appreciate that they have a president who's always asking questions. I mean, in a very real sense, Major, he leads by asking questions. And so constantly pushing, constantly asking, but make no mistake about it, uh, from the very early days of this administration, this president set the goal to revive American leadership in human space exploration. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to think that when Apollo 17 left the surface of the moon in 1972, that we've never been back that one administration after another paid, paid lip service to human space exploration, but basically we've been caught in low Earth orbit. This is a president who absolutely has been committed from the very beginning to reviving American leadership in human space exploration that begins with the moon, but we're right. going to Mars. Are you agnostic on the question of commercial versus NASA in terms of getting to the moon? Uh, the president's made it very clear that we're looking to NASA and to our traditional partners to develop the rockets and the technologies to get us to the moon within the next five years and to lay a foundation to go to Mars. But if our traditional partners can't do the job, we're going to look to the private space industry to give us the rockets and the technology to get there. That's one of the most exciting things about American leadership in space today is the burgeoning private space industry. You have leaders like SpaceX and Blue Origin who are developing 
all new technologies. Space tourism will be right. a reality for Americans in the very Both near those future. Companies you just and mentioned. those companies we're going to continue to lean on. They launch rockets right here from the Kennedy Space Center on a regular basis. People know that. To carry payloads north, right. but uh, we're going to continue to look to them to give us alternatives to continuing to, to provide American leadership in human space exploration Should we think well. of this conceptually as competitors going on, on parallel tracks toward the moon? Or does NASA have the front line position according to this administration? Well, NASA will always be the organizing uh, uh, force within the American space enterprise, but, but what partners that we work with, whether it be some of our traditional partners that are very well known and been a part of this program since the days of Apollo, or whether it's new space entrepreneurs in these industries that come up, we're looking everywhere. President Trump essentially did uh, early on what, what President Kennedy did. He set a bold goal to return to the moon and plan to go to Mars, uh, set it into motion, and we're looking at the broad range of what's available in American space enterprise to accomplish that. Is the SLS the best way to get there? Uh, it could be, and we're, we're committed to the space launch system and the extraordinary work being behind done in Behind schedule, Huntsville. billions over budget? Well, it is behind schedule, and it's over budget, but the truth is that since the start of the space launch system program, many administrations have underfunded it, have lacked to give it the attention that it deserves, and this administration will not make that mistake. We're committed to the work being done in Huntsville with the Space Launch System. But as I said when I visited Huntsville, mm -hmm. we're absolutely committed. By any means that necessary. If we, can't, if we can't get there on the platforms that we're building today, the rockets we're building today, we're going to get there by any means necessary. Because the president really does believe that, um, that American leadership in human space exploration is essential. It's essential to to our nation's economy, it's essential to our nation's security, but he also believes that it's essential to the spirit of this country. We are in every sense a nation of pioneers, uh, and we led the world to the moon before, we've led in space, and under President Trump, we'll be leading in human space exploration, and we'll be sending American astronauts from Kennedy Space Center uh, back into outer space before you know it. Mars in our lifetime, in my in lifetime? Your lifetime, in mine? Most certainly in our lifetime. Uh, there and back? Uh, there and back. Uh, in that, your lifetime, in mine? I don't think there's any question whatsoever that we'll, we'll be at Mars well within our lifetime. But it all begins with the stepping stone of getting back to the moon, developing the new technologies and, you know, developing the new methods for long-term human presence uh, on another Before on another I round planet. this out, explain to me the balance between impatience and safety. This right. organization learned tragically mm -hmm. at times the cost of impatience and a schedule that was not compatible with safety. What is the balance? Well, I think, I think, I think you can put safety and urgency together. And that's really how we got to the moon from 1961 to 1969, when President Kennedy said it was our objective to put a man on the moon and return him safely to the Earth before the end of the decade, it, we didn't know how we would do that. We didn't even know what we would need to do that. We didn't have the rockets, we didn't have the spaceships, the spacesuits, but we figured it out. He created a goal, there was urgency, the American people rallied behind it, their Congress rallied behind it, we had the resources to get it done without compromising safety. That being said, let me say one of the things that I wanted to reflect on today on, uh, is that when, when Apollo 11 went to the moon, when they were planning to send astronauts to the moon, they weren't entirely certain that they could get them back early in the program. Of course, we lost astronauts in the fire on Apollo 1. And so there will always be risks associated with that pioneering effort. Yes. But, but a challenger we really was part believe, of an accelerated schedule uh, and a schedule that drove the, decisions possibly and upon reflection, and it, people are uncomfortable with you, that. Major, you're absolutely right. And the lessons of Challenger have been internalized in NASA in ways that give us great confidence that we can move quickly, but we can move safely. We can, we can put the, the safety of our astronauts first, but still push the outside 
of the envelope in leading human space exploration.